Hi guys, enough of the BMW GS and back to my little speed fights. As I said to you guys before, it's a little hobby. Um, I've had this one for a while now, just not bothered getting around to it. Had a couple of people on YouTube ask me about um, brakes, how to change them. So I'll be going over that today and I think in one of my drawers here, I have everything about brakes. So what I'll probably do today is um, show you with the brake system off of the bike um, and the mistakes people make when trying to change pads. Um, that'll be easy. And another guy with a carburetor. Now I've done loads on carburetors, as you are more than aware. But this guy's put from the oil tank into the carburetor, which is a bit odd. When he showed me the video, I thought it didn't look right anyway. That has to go into, and there's, there's several different ones I've shown you before. There's the one that attached under the exhaust, which is a manual one, attached to the engine, and the feed goes in, and by the rotation of the crank, comes back into carburetor, or the electric ones that then go down this side here. So, unfortunately, um, he's got a manual one, and he's put the oil straight into the carburetor. Well, that's never going to work, is it? It's just going to flood the carburetor full of oil, but I think he's got other problems anyway. But I'll quickly show you where that should go today. Um, let's get started. What I said, I think I did another video of this. So, it's this has got to come off. To get this changed and there's the new one there um the back panels will come off i done up the gray and the white so i've got some uh white panels there to go on here and this cover here has got to come off and i want to check the belt which you can see over there i've got loads of belts um check the rollers and make sure it's, it's all right this is running got a new battery box there dog's happy as well so let's go on with it when changing the brake handle okay there's a couple of things you should keep in mind. Firstly, that you buy the right one. Now, Speed Fighters, 50ccs, are cable or disc, and are two different brake levers. So it makes more sense taking this off. There's five screws, one, two, three, four, five, and this just simply lifts over. It's easy with two hands, isn't it? Anyway, moves over like that. And then in here, there's one bolt, which is this one here and the nut at the bottom of it, and that does that, okay? Once you do that. Tip though, go to the back of the bike and undo this. This is the actual cable part, okay? Now it's easy to look whether you've got disc or cable. I'm not gonna explain that without just saying, saying one's got a disc and the other's got a cable, okay? But it makes more sense taking it off, have a look. Otherwise, what you'll do is what I've done today. I had one anyway, you see. Um, this is, a cable one for speed fight but what you'll notice is that's plain and the one that goes on here has got this little knobbly bit here now that knobbly bit does your brakes well it doesn't do your brakes it does the sensor which is located just there okay and that that little knobbly bit that that this other one hasn't got that bit there when you put your new one on it'll work fine but your brake lights will permanently on and you'll wonder why and so on so I suppose my top tip today is don't go ordering a part for a bike without looking first, okay? Because otherwise you're just going to be in, well, you're just going to end up with parts you don't want. Um, like the brakes, and I've got a guy asking me about brakes. There are two sorts. We have the larger sort, caliper, and we have the ordinary caliper, okay? These ones here are much bigger brakes. So again, check before you buy. Um, I'll be explaining, I must do it now I suppose, when people change brakes, okay, um, they are really, really simple. I mean, to be honest with you, I'm surprised someone's asked, but you know, um, you do get asked. And it's the two bolts here to undo, um, take your wheel off, balance it whether way front or back, and take the whole caliper out, 13 mil normally, and this will come off in your hand, and then you can get on with it. I say take the wheel off because it's a bit of a wiggle. Um, what people make the general mistake with this one is, and this is the most common one, they undo these two bolts and they split the caliper. Once you split the caliper, roll the pain because the seals go, you push back together. When you try and get compression on the handle, all it does is pump out oil and you wonder why you've damaged it. So always take the two larger ones off, which if I can use my hands, is the ones here, they connect to the bike. Do not do the two small ones, okay? And then simple case of checking the um, reservoir. Now, more than likely, it hasn't been checked for ages, and they're just two little Phillips screws. Um, and it's located on the other side normally, because on this one it is cable and 
There you go. Sorry about the light today. This one here, undo these two bolts. Have a look. Okay, if you have to bleed, now if it's gone down, don't panic, because when you squeeze back the calipers, and that's two screwdrivers, I've done a video on it, when you squeeze them back, or you can buy one of these, okay, they're not brilliant, they can't get in. So you're better off putting two screwdrivers and pushing the calipers back out again. This fills up the oil. What well, common mistake is that they'll fill this up, then change their brakes, and then what you find is that it all locks up and just doesn't work very well. So, again, it's just simple. In there, put two screwdrivers there, crisscross them and push the calipers back. If they go back uneven, WD, push them back with the handle again and then slowly push them out. Try and make sure you evenly crisscross. So that's a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, and they go, they go, do go back. If they're seized, they're seized, you know? Um, you can get some WD, you can scrub them up a little bit and then keep trying to push them out. And they only push out and push out and push out in little like pulses and eventually close, then you push them back out again. Not good to push them all the way out because then the seals could go. So simple really. Um, and if you want to change your brake fluid, then it's a case of um, the bleed nipple, which is here. Again, WD loads are only about, I think it's eight, no, eight mil, 10 mil, not sure. Um, but undo it slightly and then bleed them. I've done a video on bleeding before, or you can just go online and check out that, but that's not what I'm here to do today. Anyway, here's an example. Now you've loosened the cable off, okay? And it's a simple case, off it comes. But if you don't loosen the cable off, which I showed you here, it'd be really, really, really tight. Remember when you put it back on though, that you may make sure you tighten it back up again, and it should be comfortable enough. On the disc one, it's completely different, and it will be, you know, but on these ones, it is only a friction brake, and they're never gonna, you know, be brilliant. It should stop you, but you want the back wheel to turn nicely. Anyway, enough back brakes. Right, guys, just remember about the petrol vacuum. I've done loads of these ones. The bottom one is the air, okay, and that goes into inlet manifold, and the top one is where the petrol goes into the carburetor. And when you want to prime it, you suck the bottom one to prime your carb. But someone recently on YouTube asked about this one here. So it's got a filter, and they put it straight in to the carb. Not a good idea. Now this one, unfortunately, hasn't got the um, pump that's connected to the engine. This one goes down here, into a pump down here. What I've got is one here I made earlier, look. There, and that sits on where the exhaust goes, just down here, okay? And you see the bigger, thicker one? That is that one. So, it, the thick one with the, um, that little bit there, the filter bit, goes in on the left-hand side, and the small pipe comes out from the right hand side and then goes into your oil on the carburetor. If you fed this big thick one, which you have, straight into your carburetor, you're just getting full flow into your carburetor and I'm pretty sure it'll be pretty messy as well. So, there's the basics. Anyway, there's an old saying, ain't broke, don't fix it. But if it's been sitting in a shed like this one has for four years, you've got to have a look, in ya. So, the belt actually looks really good condition. You know, it could have been in a really stonking hot shed. This wasn't. The clutch, I've shown you to test clutch before. Get both hands and pull it back. Very good. So the belt's good. The actual um, clutch is good. And the variator system itself is fine. So, you know, I'll just put it back together, basically. I'm more than happy with that. Um, I'll take the bolt off. I've done that before and showing you. Just make sure the rollers are okay and clean. And then I will think I'll spray that black. Uh, wash it down, spray it black and then put the two white panels I've got in there back on the back of this. Um, as usual, I'm charging a brand new battery. You know, you know how to fill batteries, of course, that's brand new. This one needs it. I'll give this a good wash and clean. I will order another one of these, okay? Um, MOT stations, uh, shouldn't fail it. They can moan about it. I mean, if it's sharp, smoothing it down they may pull it as an advisory okay may pull it as an advisory shouldn't fail it um but if they do it is a really easy fix as i've just shown you so that's the brakes done for the other chap on youtube that's the pipe where it should go in the carburetor done for the other guy and as i said i checked this this isn't in a bad bike one thing i mentioned about buying parts i said check them first before you buy i was just gonna end up with a shed full of parts aren't you is some of these tires and stuff they have can you see that a rotation on them so be careful when buying tires as well if they're rotational make sure you know it's for front or back um because they fail on that if it's a wrong rotation if you've got a rotational tire and you buy one they'll fail that on mot and um, there's lots of failures but if you get you know just a little bit of insight you're okay so that is this one down in a nutshell i'll take a picture of it after i've washed it for you just to show the final bit 
Um, and thanks for watching, guys, my little YouTube channel. I will apologise, I get some dislikes, mainly from foreign countries. I suppose it's because I'm English. I had a person personally message me and ask me, could I slow down and speak English? Okay, um, his typing wasn't that good. However, I apologise. Um, from Essex, I've got a bit of a, I don't think it's Cockney, uh, more of a nasal because I've always got sinus and cold, I suppose, even when it's sunny. But um, I try my best. Okay, so slow down, watch them twice or three times if I'm babbling on. There's 30 odd videos now of speed fights on here. I'm not going to do any more. I've done everything on here. You do just have to have a look. Um, I did change the name of some of them, blogs, they say, or part one, two, three, four, whatever they're going to be. Um, but there should be everything now known to a speed fight person that is on here. You know, about wiring, uh, indicators. Maybe check out some of the comments as well, because people have asked me how to rewire an indicator system, because the wire's been cut. And I said, just chip off the actual indicator. You know, it still work. The light's got a flash up there for the MOT. So there we go, guys. Even like this little bit here. Can you see the registration plate? It's cracked, okay? Just moving it off. They can fail it on that. Yes, they can. <laughs> They'll fail it on that. So make sure that there's no sharp edges, plastics, put tape over them. For that, I'm going to um, nicely saw along the bottom. Um, and that should make that a pass as well. Um, even these, if they're, if they're jammed out or whatever, they can fail it on them, depending on your garage. Anyway, guys, please like, share, subscribe. Um, have a check through my bits and bobs. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. Well, there you go, guys. Quick picky. We're looking all clean. A few extra stickies on her. Uh, nice and white at the back now. Clean that looks much nicer when sprayed with gloss black. Uh, cut that little bit off and then put, made it straight and then put obviously the license plate over it. And uh, there we go. Job done. Um, guys, do check out my other videos if you um, have lots of questions about other little bits. Please do check out my videos. Um, I do everything on them, you know. Um, thanks for watching. This uh, is going to be the last one of the speed fights, basically. Um, calling it a day, uh, being a great hobby. But uh, put my shed on something else and um, just go from there, guys. Obviously, I'm loving my GS, so I'll do lots of updates on that, which is not good for you speed fight people. But there are 30, I don't know, five, six videos now blog, um, one, two, three fixes, and so on. About the CDI units, batteries, you name it, it's all on there. So if you want your bike to look and run like this does, and uh, I suppose it's a case of proof is in the pudding. Um, I'm going to kick start it because obviously I, I've got one hand. There you go. Simple as that. Nice one on the bike. I did make the exhaust. You can see that. That was handy to him. And now she took it over. Absolutely lovely. So that's ready for the MOT. Job done. Take care, guys.